Hey everybody, I'm Matthew Fresquez alongside Lauren Nevin. And we are here at the 2014 All-State Sugar Bowl in New Orleans at the Superdome. And Lauren, what are your two key points for this matchup? Well, first you have to look at who's going to be OU's starting quarterback. Obviously, Blake Bell and Trevor Knight bring completely different things to the table. With Blake Bell, you'll see more sideline passes. But with Trevor Knight, you'll have a more dynamic running game. And you also could see some action from Kendall Thompson, as you've seen earlier in the season. Here at Breaktown Ballpark, one slugger from Dominican Republic is making an impact. His name, Sosa. Not Sammy, but Ruben Sosa, an infielder for the Red Hawks. At just five foot six, he's proving size doesn't affect ability. The Grizzlies guard, also known as the grind father, comes back to OSU, not only to help out these kids defensively, but to also be their voice of motivation to help them stay in school and follow their dreams. Women's basketball is ranked number one in the preseason Big 12 coaches poll, and they're 11th in the national rankings right behind number 10, Baylor. And now that Brittany Griner is gone, Baylor really doesn't seem like that big of a threat anymore. OU is returning four of its five starters from last season, so they have an experienced score, and the bench is deep with veteran talent. And I'm Lauren Nevitt. On Fridays, we take the handoff from our news team to give you expanded coverage of sports from the University of Oklahoma campus. Kate Sandoval went to the home opener against Alabama to see what the roster overhaul means for the season ahead. Over the past three years, Sooners were always ranked within the top five for their passing offense. This year, they're 98th. The Sooners are just way too run-oriented. Blake Bell needs to improve on his passing game against Kansas. He threw a fourth down interception on a play that had Aaron Rutkowski wide open. Sooner volleyball works their magic even when they're on the road. Oklahoma dominated Baylor on Saturday with a 3-0 win over the Bears. And senior middle blocker Simon McLaurin took over 10th place for all-time career kills at OU with, get this, 1,182 kills. Woo. That is a lot. Women's basketball is finally getting their momentum back after a two-game winning streak, like you said, without Aaron yep. Ellenberg. But senior guard Morgan Hook led the Sooners and played a huge role in the absence of Ellenberg. She was actually named Big 12 Player of the Week. All right, I have to go with Knight, a starting QB, followed okay. by Thompson, and then Bell. None of them can throw okay. the ball down the field consistently, so you have to go with who can execute the run game the best, and that's T. Knight. Until he came into the second quarter, Bell could not get the ball down the field against Iowa State, and Iowa State is like the worst team in the Big 12 right now. <laughs> yeah. And then it was another big play that added to the Sooners' momentum when Brennan Clay just takes off like a rocket and scores. Sooners are going to be up 27 to 10 after this play. And then coming up, my favorite play of the game, T. Knight doing what he does best, using his feet. He decides a first down isn't enough. He's going all the way. He breaks the tackle and stumbles into the end zone for a touchdown. OU baseball knows how to dress to impress. This year, a Halloween intra-squad scrimmage last week marked the end of fall ball. The Sooner community watched as Aldale Mitchell Field was taken over by characters ranging from Woody to Buddy the Elf to Napoleon Dynamite. Kind of disappointed, as a matter of fact, because the Avengers didn't let me join their squad. Despite the fun night of tricks and treats, do you have any chapstick? No. Right, right. The, first. the Sooners weren't dressed up just for laughs. They were representing a more serious cause. That I might have been given a bad break, but I've got an awful lot to live for. Thank you. They played to end ALS, better known as Lou Gehrig's disease. It is, it is basically, at its basic point, creating someone to become weaker and weaker until they're unable to speak or swallow or to breathe on their own. Would you like to donate $5 to ALS for a bracelet? New head coach Pete Hughes decided to start a fundraiser for this deadly neurological disease after his former player at Boston College was diagnosed with ALS at just 27 years old. Frades is swinging the bat today with an awful lot of confidence. Pete Frades was a, one of my all-time favorite players and he's still battling with the disease but his mission is to raise awareness and funds for this disease, which is an orphan disease. OU baseball players were equally eager to support the cause as they tried to bring light to a dark situation. You know, Coach Hughes really put on, a, did a great job bringing it out, and there's a great crowd here tonight, and that this is just the beginning of us helping Pete Freys, Freights, who is battling this right now. Although it's considered a rare disease, one in 500 people will die from ALS. 
With Coach Hughes leading the way, Sooner Baseball wants to do anything they can to lower that number. So they're planning on making this awareness game an annual tradition. It feels pretty cool because I'll, I'll be able to be a part of it for three or four years or whatever. And it, I mean, it, it, it's a lot of fun, but it, it's also for a good cause, which I mean, it makes it even more worth it, honestly. It's a cause that the players and coaches seem to be benefiting from as well. Coach Hughes just has a huge heart, and I'm really looking forward to playing for him this year. And I, I'm honest, I'm a, I, with him being here, yeah, I'm a better person than I was even last year. He's got us in the community doing great things, and I'm really proud to say he's the head coach here. Now, Sooner Baseball looks forward to doing great things both on and off the field. Lauren Nevitt, Sooner Sports Pad. A picture is worth a thousand words. Joy, excitement, love, family. Everyone has a story and every photo has a story behind it. This appears to be a photograph from the May 99 tornado that has gone through the May 2013 tornado. On May 20th, 2013, an EF5 tornado struck Moore, Oklahoma. As thousands lost their homes, even more lost their pictures. Today, at the Oklahoma School of Photography, volunteers are working to give victims back their captured moments. You know, we don't know. This may be the last photograph that was taken of someone with their grandfather or their father, because you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And it may be a snapshot to us, but to them, that's a memory. And we want to make sure we get those memories back to them. To return these memories looking untouched, the photos are taken through a long process of restoration. Literally with the weight of your hand, you're going to just rub across. In a full day of cleaning, volunteers might get through just 30 photos. With so many required hours, some tornado victims have dedicated their own time to the project. My goal is hoping that one of these pictures touches someone. Even if I have to work on a thousand pictures, I hope at least just one touches someone. They find something out of it. Even the frailest pictures can eventually bring back a speck of strength. It's amazing when you look at the damage of some of these that it can be refurbished. You know, even a photo like this, we can fix that. You know, this is, this is an easy fix for us. Um, even photos like this, I can, I can get him back. This is one of thousands of photos that have been turned in over the past five months. After being sorted, cleaned, and documented, it's then uploaded to the photo rescue website where it can then hopefully be reunited with its original owner. With boxes and boxes and boxes of found photos, the reunification process might be timely. We are doing our best to get them out as fast as we can. It's just a tedious process and we have to handle these with care because we don't want to do more damage to the photos. They've already been through a whole lot. But until then, more stories will continue to be found and recovered. Lauren Nevitt, OU Nightly.